OpenAI just shared tons of crazy new additions, improvements, and reduced pricing across many parts of their AI platform. Some of these crazy new additions include a new GPT-4 Turbo model that's cheaper and more capable and supports a 1 to 8K context window, new multimodal capabilities in the platform, including vision, image creation, and text-to-speech, and new GPTs and GPT store and assistance APIs that makes it easier for developers to build their own assistive AI apps that have goals and can call models and tools. Now, I've split this video into two parts. The first part focuses on GPT-4 Turbo and the latest API improvements, and then the second part focuses on the assistance API and GPTs. So let's go. Now, OpenAI released the first version of GPT-4 in March and made GPT-4 generally available to all developers in July this year. GPT-4 Turbo is more capable and has knowledge of world events up to April 2023. It also has a 1 to 8K context window, so it can fit the equivalent of more than 300 pages of text into a single prompt, which is pretty crazy. They've also optimized its performance, so OpenAI are able to offer GPT-4 Turbo at a three times cheaper price for input tokens and a two times cheaper price for output tokens compared to normal GPT-4. GPT-4 Turbo also comes with two cool API features. The first is an improvement on functions calling that lets you describe multiple functions for your app or external APIs to its models, and have the model intelligently choose to output a JSON object containing arguments to call those functions. And the second is then the new seed parameter, which enables reproducible outputs by making the model return consistent completions a little bit like mid-journey can to maintain a consistent image. Next up on the announcements were updates to the API. GPT-4 Turbo with Vision can accept images as inputs in the Chat Completions API, enabling use cases such as generating captions, analyzing real-world images in detail, and reading documents with figures. This has already been available in ChatGPT Plus subscriptions for a little while, but it's now coming to the API. Just like on ChatGPT Plus, developers can now also integrate Dolly 3, and OpenAI CEO Sam Altman mentioned that Snap, Coca-Cola, and Shutterstock have been using Dolly 3 to programmatically generate images and designs for their customers and campaigns recently. In addition to images, developers can now also generate human quality speech from text via the text-to-speech API. The new TTS model offers six preset voices to choose from and two modal variants, TTS1 and TTS1 HD. TTS-1 is optimized for real-time use cases, and TTS-1 HD is optimized for quality. It wasn't just GPT-4 Turbo that was getting release updates. GPT-3.5 Turbo now also supports a 16,000 context window by default, and the new 3.5 Turbo model supports improved instruction following, JSON mode, and parallel function calling, as well as reduced pricing across the platform, making it great for people who want to play around with some of the models before upgrading to all the features of GPT-4. Now we're gonna come back to the API in a second, but first I wanna dive into some of the consumer-facing updates to ChatGPT and something amazing called GPTs. So one of the things that Sam Altman mentioned were lots of people were finding the model selection dropdown in ChatGPT was a real pain. And so this is being completely simplified, so all of the models and options are available by default. The biggest news of the entire event, however, was the introduction of something called GPTs. You can now create custom versions of ChatGPT that combine custom instructions, extra knowledge, and any combination of skills that you can connect into your own ChatGPT. GPTs are a new way for anyone to create a tailored version of ChatGPT to be more helpful in their daily life, at specific tasks, at work or at home, and then share that creation with others. For example, GPTs can help people learn the rules to any board game, help teach children maths, or even design stickers. You can think of it as a little bit of an extension of the plugin store and a way for OpenAI to create their own app store where people are actually creating their own versions of ChatGPT. Anyone can easily build their own GPT without any coding required. You can make them for yourself, just for your company's internal use, or publicly available for everyone. Creating a GPT is super easy, just like starting a conversation, giving instructions and extra knowledge, and picking what it can do. 
like searching the OpenAI database, making images or analyzing data. And you can try it out now at chatgpt.com forward slash create. Now, one of the reasons OpenAI have launched this was because lots of people have been customizing ChatGPT using their own complex prompts, but what they wanted to give people was the option to create their own standalone instance of ChatGPT that they could then share with others. It's very much a UX and accessibility play and one which could open up the powers of AI to many more people than those who are familiar with prompt engineering. The GPT store is gonna be rolling out later on this month and they're also going to have a revenue share option so that the most popular GPTs are going to be able to make people a revenue stream. So just like with the original App Store, let's try and get in early and see who can make the most in-demand accessible GPT out there. The final announcement of the OpenAI Developer Conference goes back to the API and it's something that's killed off many chatbot wrapper startups and it's called the Assistance API which uses retrieval and code interpreter. For developers, OpenAI are releasing the Assistance API, which is the first step towards helping developers build agent-like experiences within their own applications. An Assistant is basically a purpose-built AI that has a specific set of instructions that leverages any extra knowledge and that can call models and tools to perform tasks. The new Assistance API provides new capabilities such as code interpreter and retrieval, as well as custom function calling to handle a lot of the heavy lifting that developers previously had to do themselves, enabling them to build high quality AI apps. This API is built for flexibility with use cases ranging from anything like a natural language based data analysis app to a coding assistant, an AI powered vacation planner, a voice controlled DJ, a smart visual canvas, and the list goes on and on. The Assistance API is built on the same capabilities that enable the new GPT's product with custom instructions and tools like code interpreter, retrieval and function calling, all of which can be handled within the OpenAI playground. A key change introduced by this API is the idea of persistent and infinitely long threads, which allow developers to hand off thread state management to OpenAI and work around context window constraints. With the Assistance API, you simply add each new message to an existing thread. Assistants also have access to call new tools as needed, including things like Code Interpreter, where it can write and run Python code in a sandbox environment, and Retrieval, where you can augment the assistant with knowledge from outside the models, such as proprietary domain data, product information, or documents provided by the users. This means you don't need to compute and store embeddings for your documents or implement chunking and search algorithms. The real focus across the entire developer conference was on ease of use for both developers and the general public. So whether you're looking to create your own internal tool or you're looking to build a new GPT and share it on the GPT marketplace, there's never been a better place to dive into OpenAI's playground and get testing and playing with some of their new tools. If you're interested in learning more about prompt engineering that you can add into GPTs and your own API, I've put up a video over here that's definitely worth checking out and I'll catch you again in the next video. See ya.